there's this thing with college athletics where everyone's like, oh, the NBA is clearly better. You're always going to do that. And I thought I thought it was so odd when people were like, well, it's a foregone conclusion. He's going to leave UConn to go to L.A. Sometimes money can't buy happiness. And going to L.A. is something that's not for everybody. And I don't even really believe that Danny Hurley took this job super seriously. What say you, Saul Bookman? I would agree. I think I think he listened to him. He heard him out. Um, the fact that he took a meeting was probably the most alarming thing for UConn fans and college basketball fans. So, I mean, I'm not surprised that he's he's going back to UConn. Like, again, I will say this. It used to be more stable to stay in college. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can necessarily say that anymore, but in Dan, Dan Hurley's case, because he's won back-to-back -back national championships in such a quick amount of time at UConn, he, you would assume that he's safe for at least the next half decade. Uh, just solely off of that. So it is more stable for him. And you're right, man. In today's day and age, man, like coaches don't get a lot of time to turn things around. Right. So, you know, in the NBA, you you might be lucky if if everything goes wrong that first year, you might be lucky if you get a second year. But most most op most times, even nowadays, that's just not the case. You get one and done and then they move on to the next person. So if you can't turn it around quickly, they're on to the next one. And, and, you know, it's not, I, again, I get that it's not for everybody, but Mike Krzyzewski, I thought, made a really good point one time. He was asked, because keep in mind, he turned down the Lakers at a much higher position because he was looking at possibly coaching a prime Kobe Bryant at age 31 for the next, you know, or 29 for the next three or four years. He saw, he said it was the best decision that he ever made not going. And he said it wasn't a slight to the Lakers, but he said in college, I felt that I could have my own legacy. And he said, I know that that might sound a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit pretentious, whatever the case may be. But I look at Billy Donovan, for example, Billy Donovan. And again, he's clearly not itching to get back into college, but Billy Donovan could have gone down as one of the handful of best college basketball coaches ever. He's kind of a mediocre NBA coach. Now, again, he probably likes his life more, uh, but there's a lot to be said though. I think for staying in college, I like I like this and I hope we see more of this to be honest with you. Yeah, I, Again, I think there's there's pros and cons to both sides now. I think college athletics has uh, quickly started to mirror what professional sports has been as well. I mean, you look at Tommy Lloyd in that first year, you're still going to have people, even though they got to the Sweet 16, they get bounced in the Sweet 16 in his very first season, and nobody thought that they were going to be as good as they were. Right. Um, already calling for his head. Like, right. like, what are we doing here? You know what I'm saying? It's just such a volatile um, you know, job right now to be a head coach. I will say this in my entire, I've been alive for 44 years, Mike. I can't remember a time where I've, I've thought, man, I definitely am glad I'm not a coach yes. because I used to want to be a coach for so long. And I look at it now and I'm like, man, that is just an impossible task. It's exactly. an impossible task. Well, and when you go off to the NBA too, and again, we're going to get back, we're going to get the U of A here in just a second. Look at the Lakers situation here. And this is why I never thought he was really going to take the job because that is a, you've got a loaded Western conference right now. You've got a guy in LeBron James who still is awesome, but he's also almost 40 years old. He's pushed out a lot of different coaches through his time there. If you're Danny Hurley, you're like, all right, I can basically choose my own spot if I ever want to go to the NBA. I just don't know that that's the spot. And I don't know that the Lakers, you tell me if I'm wrong because you're an NBA guy. I don't know that the Lakers right now, the way they're presently constructed, has the cachet that it did 15 years ago. I mean, the Lakers will always have cachet. I mean, they got that's the name brand by itself. Like it's, right. it's the Lakers. But I will say this: I, I agree with you in terms of their outlook here in the in the short term future. Like, you know, if you go to the Lakers this year, you're not winning anything. Right. And, as much as I, I think LeBron is 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 great and AD is great, like they're not set up to win multiple championships or have a nice long run. And so how you do you get how do you get those replacement pieces in? There's too much stuff that you can't control when it comes to that as a head coach um, in the NBA, as opposed to in the college game where you are the one doing the recruiting and your assistants are doing the recruiting and you have the ultimate yes or no. So it's it's complex. I I, I'm not surprised that he ended up staying. I think he's a faithful East Coast guy, and that's where he wants to stay. I think they're going to make it work for him no matter what. He's going to get his money no matter what. But right. uh, I, think, I think he made the right choice, to be honest with you. I think it was, it was, it's perfect to go back to UConn.
and I dovetail this with Tommy Lloyd, a guy that's very close with Tommy Lloyd made a very good, po- I thought an interesting point about Tommy Lloyd. I think a lot of times in this day and age, everyone's just about the money. And again, I got no problem. It's like with, you know, like with Joe on saying on, I have no problem with the kid going to the highest bidder. We talked about it before that, you know what, you got to do what's best for you from a business perspective. But Tommy Lloyd also is more, and this guy told me, he said he likes Tucson. He says, I don't think that he would like coaching in Chapel Hill or Lexington as much. Sure, it's a richer brand. I get all of that. But he also can't just go to the bar down the street and be able to get a drink. People are just wired differently, Saul. And again, that's not making it right. That's not making it wrong. But I think a lot of times people just go with the generic, well, you got to take the money. And that's not always the case.